Zach's Tech Turf CES coverage is brought to you by our sponsors Corsair and Antec. Big thanks to these companies for making this trip possible. My first ever trip to CES was an amazing experience, especially getting to collaborate and hang out with the tech fam all week, but what's even better is all of the new product announcements in the world of PC hardware. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm going to be recapping all of my personal favorite announcements that we saw at CES this year, and I have a feeling that a lot of these are going to be your favorites as well. And if you're new here and you want to see other CES videos or PC hardware videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's get into it. So just as a very quick disclaimer, this list is made up of only PC hardware announcements that I personally saw during my trip to CES. I'm well aware that there are some very interesting things that I didn't get to see such as the Dell handheld computer and the Sony electric car, but obviously I didn't have enough time to check out every single thing here at CES. So first up on my personal list are the 360 hertz monitors at the Nvidia booth, which I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have already seen at this point. Now before getting to the booth, I actually haven't even tried 240 hertz yet myself, so when I saw 360 hertz in person, I was pretty shocked. Nvidia did stack up multiple tests for us to run where we bounced from 60 hertz to 360 hertz, so obviously there was a huge difference, but according to their research, esports gamers can see a 4% skill average bump going from 240 to 360. I don't think someone of my skill level will really see an improvement though. Also, while we were at the Nvidia booth, we got to check out the new Asus Zephyrus G14 laptop, which is one of the first laptops that will feature AMD's new 8-core 4800HS processor, and it's also rocking either an RTX 2060 or GTX 1660 Ti, which is awesome to see in a 14-inch form factor. The lid of the laptop is also rocking a custom light design, so you can make it display whatever you want, and the laptop is definitely one that I would consider buying because of how clean, minimal, and slim it is with that much power. Next up, we have one of the AMD announcements that I'm pretty sure you've seen in their live stream already. The 5600 XD is a graphics card that we were all honestly kind of expecting, but they released it at a good enough price that I think it's worth mentioning. The 5600 XD is aimed at being the best 1080p graphics card that gamers can buy. It'll certainly get you into 1440p for a lot of games, mind you, and it's competing directly with the GTX 1660 Ti. According to AMD, it will indeed beat out the 16. 60 Ti by a few percentage points in gaming, and since they released it at pretty much the exact same price, I think this is worth getting excited over. This was also my first press announcement event from a big company like AMD, so it was just cool to be in the crowd and not watching it from a computer screen. Next up, I got to see a ton of different mini PCs from the Zotac booth, and they had a bunch of different models, but one in particular is their new Inspire Studio model aimed directly at creators. The Inspired Studio is a tiny build that's perfect for traveling to events like CES, and it's rocking a 65 watt core i7-9700, 32GB of DDR4 RAM, a 500GB NVMe SSD, 2TB HDD, and even 25 gigabit Ethernet if you're editing off your NAS. I had no problems editing my videos off my MacBook Pro, which I'm actually going to be making a dedicated video on here very soon, but I do think it would be pretty neat to travel to events like CES with the Zotac Inspire. Moving on, we definitely saw some pretty cool new products at the Corsair booth, which I made an entire dedicated video on, which you should definitely check out, but out of all of those, one of my favorites is their new A5 CPU cooler. The A500 is a $100 air cooler, which is the first time Corsair is jumping into the air cooling game for quite some time, and it's competing directly with other high-end coolers like the NHD15 and the Assassin 3. Another product from Corsair that I'm excited about is their new project called Concept Orion. Basically, it's an RGB lighting system for tempered glass side panels. Here you can see that Corsair installed individual RGB lights around the case. I don't necessarily think that this concept looks amazing right now, but I do indeed think that this is the direction that we will see a lot of case manufacturers go to in the future. Imagine if instead of all these spaced out RGBs, you could pack thousands of lights on the side panel and be able to create custom RGB images on the side of your case. Next up, Be Quiet actually had some announcements that I thought were pretty interesting as well. Both their new Pure Rock 2 and their Shadow Rock 3 CPU coolers. The Shadow Rock 3 
is a bit beefier and rocking five six millimeter heat pipes and will launch around $50. And the smaller one of the bunch is the Pure Rock 2, which will come in at $35 or $40 if you get the black version. I'm really excited about the Pure Rock 2 as it'll be a direct competitor with the new Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo Rev 2 that I heard was also announced this week. And finally, the last announcement that I'm excited about is Thermaltake's new Neon Maker software, which I made an entire dedicated video on, which you should check out up here. I'll make this quick because I at least hope that you watch my dedicated Thermaltake CES video, but basically this new Neon Maker software is like a video editor for your RGB lights. You have a timeline down at the bottom, which allows you to create and control RGB animations that happen over time. Up at the top, you can then position your RGB products from Thermaltake and place them in a specific order so that way you can create full RGB build animations. There isn't really anything like this on the market at this time, so I'm pretty excited to see more of this software in action. So now that all my CES coverage is complete, I just wanted to thank my sponsors again, Corsair and Antec, for making this trip possible. And overall, I had a really fun time here at CES 2020. Not only were seeing all these product announcements a fun experience, but honestly, being able to network with a ton of company reps and other content creators made the trip entirely worth it. Well, that wraps up my CES recap video and all of my CES coverage for 2020. As always, drop a comment down below about what feedback you have for any of my CES coverage so I can use that for next year's CES videos. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, back to our normal gaming PC build guides. You don't want to miss that video.